With the Daytona 500 looming, two key NASCAR free agents are already off the market. How's it going y'all? My name is Eric. Welcome to Out of the Groove. Just landed here in beautiful, sunny Florida, about half an hour from Daytona Beach. I'll be heading to the Speedway tonight for single car qualifying. And just after qualifying, if all goes according to plan, I'll be going live. So be sure to tune in tonight. Should be a fun evening, albeit a late one. Good thing I packed some sour candy to keep me awake tonight. Whoa, it's like I'm back home, but everything is more Sour? This episode is sponsored by Toxic Waste Hazardously Sour Candy. It's the sourest candy available in the market. Available in small, bigger, and biggest. Sour smog balls. Oh, that's chewy. Toxic Waste Atoms. Ooh, I probably should have savored that a little more. <laughs> Slime liquor. I'm pretty sure I've seen these on like TikTok. Mm, okay, that is actually scary good. Is my tongue changing color? Oh, I'm just gonna sit here and eat candy this entire episode. Gummy bears? You've gotta be kidding me. This is dangerous. I'm just gonna eat these all day while I'm sitting at my computer editing. I gotta get back to the video. I can't just sit here and eat candy all episode. Toxic waste, hazardously sour candy. Try it for yourself. Head to their website and follow them on all social media. All those links are down in the description below. In all seriousness though, thank you to Toxic Waste for sponsoring this episode. As of the time I'm recording this, Daytona 500 Media Day is underway. I'm sure we're gonna get some interesting quotes, some spicy sound bites, but I'm gonna save my Media Day reaction for tomorrow. Because earlier this morning, just as I was boarding my flight, two top NASCAR teams announced key extensions with key star drivers. First, Trackhouse has agreed to a multi-year extension with driver Daniel Suarez. They didn't give any additional details, so whether this is a two-year, three-year, four-year extension, we don't know. What we do know is that this is the most stability by far Daniel Suarez has had in his NASCAR Cup Series career. This is the first season going into 2023 where he'll have been with the same team for three straight years. He'd had two years at Gibbs, that one weird year at SHR, then another weird year driving for a 35th place Toyota team. Now three straight years at Trackhouse, some stability, some much needed stability for the 31 year old Daniel Suarez. I am not surprised whatsoever to hear that Trackhouse and Suarez agreed to a multi year extension. The timing's a little surprising. You know, last year they agreed to just a one year extension. I thought that was weird because. Daniel Suarez was supposed to be the guy. He was their first pick. He was the driver they initially built the entire team around. Why only sign him to a one-year extension, right? Isn't he part of the long-term plan? I'm not sure why they waited until this moment to ink Suarez long-term. Maybe some sponsorship finally fell into place where they needed it. But regardless, I'm happy this announcement was made before the season started, you know, so it wouldn't be a distraction. Of course, yesterday, Daniel Suarez was our guest on the first ever episode of Out of the Groove Power Hour, my all-new podcast with Brennan Poole. And in it, he talked about how he wasn't getting the support he felt he needed his early years in Cup when he was with Joe Gibbs Racing. But now at Trackhouse, uh, things seem to be clicking. He feels heard for the first time in his Cup Series career. The first two years were definitely extremely difficult because, you know, people just didn't listen to me. Uh, I, I was asking for different things or looking for different things. And, and I felt like, you know, we were always, you know, underwater for some reason. And, and there, there was always a struggle. And, uh, and once I went to Trash House and, and they put on, on the table all the plan and everything that they actually wanted to do with Trash House. Back in, at the end of 2020, when I announced I was gonna go to Trash House, I said that this was gonna be my biggest opportunity in the Cup Series. And a lot of people told me I was crazy. I already knew, you know, what I was talking about. I already knew the plan that Justin and Ty Norris had, but nobody else did. And, and a lot of people gave me a lot of crap because I said that, but I said, okay, just, just wait. And now, now, now they know what I saw back then. I'm rooting for Daniel Suarez. Last year was good. It was a breakout season in some ways. He got his first win. He made the playoffs. He advanced past the first round of the playoffs, but he still found himself in the shadow of his teammate, Ross Chastain. So Daniel Suarez, he's 31 years old. He's no longer a young, scrappy rookie. The results need to start to match the hype consistently. 
Last year was a great step in the right direction. Can he continue that? Can he build on that success here in 2023? He's got that stability. He's got a team that believes in him, that he believes in. I think Daniel Suarez is a very good driver. He won an Xfinity Series championship, but I think we're gonna find out in the next year or so if Daniel Suarez is a future Cup Series championship contender. Because right now, I don't really think so. I think in a great car, in a great situation, he can do what he did last year. 12 or 13 top 10s, he gets a win, makes a decent playoff run, but doesn't really put any pressure on the championship for. It's a great season for any driver, but it's not a true championship contending season. Right now, I think that's Daniel Suarez's ceiling. Now that he has some stability, third year with Trackhouse, this is his best chance to prove to all of us that no, he can break through that ceiling. His ceiling is even higher. He has a Ross Chastain type ceiling. We could see that 99 in the championship for this year. This is a great chance for Daniel Suarez to prove what he really has. I'm rooting for him though, uh, but that was the first big bit of driver free agent news this morning. The second announcement included a key sponsor. Hendrick Motorsports confirmed this morning that Alex Bowman has signed a multi-year contract extension with the team that will keep him in the 48 car through the 2026 season. In addition to Bowman staying in the 48, Ally will continue to be the primary sponsor of the 48 car through 2028. Five year extension. Huge, huge news out of Hendrick Motorsports this morning. Alex Bowman fans rejoice. You no longer have to question his security at Hendrick Motorsports. This is a bombshell. Alex Bowman is a good driver. He's made the playoffs every single season. He's been full-time in a Hendrick Motorsports car. I think that's worth noting. He's also won a race each of the last four seasons. He's got seven total career wins. Sure, he hasn't quite caught lightning in a bottle the same way Chase Elliott and Kyle Larson have the last couple of years, but Alex Bowman has been more than serviceable in that 48. I'm glad to see he'll be sticking around. Hopefully he can be a little more consistent than he was last season, because last season I think he makes the round of eight before that injury at Texas. Had a great play playoffs, but had a terrible summer. Just real up and down wonky season. I want to see Bowman, now with new crew chief Blake Harris, be a little more even, a little more stays, consistently good. That's what I'm hoping for. But now, uh, you know, just talked about Daniel Suarez and stability. <laughs> Alex Bowman has, has tremendous stability for the next, I mean, that's four years because this year plus three more, four more seasons at least, Bowman will be in the 48. That is the kind of security, this kind of stability that is almost unheard of in the NASCAR Cup Series these days. Or I should say, as long as you don't drive for Hendrick, because Hendrick Motorsports has done a tremendous job of locking up their young, talented core group of drivers for the long haul. Bowman is now signed through 2026. Kyle Larson is also signed through 2026. William Byron is signed through 2025. And Chase Elliott last year signed an extension to keep him in the nine car through 2027. So for at least the next three full seasons, including this year, Hendrick's lineup will not change. And they've got some strong, consistent sponsor support as well from Exalta on the 24, HendrickCars.com on the five, Napa Hooters, you name it, on the nine, and Ally on the 48. And they are set up for the future. So this news this morning, I'll be honest, at first surprised me a little. I'm not surprised that Ally's coming back and that Bowman's staying in the 48, but I'm a little surprised it was announced this early in the season. Or at least I was until I remember this is Hendrick Motorsports. This is what they do. They've extended all of their drivers in the last year for multiple years. Compared to the other super teams in the NASCAR Cup Series, Hendrick Motorsports' future is rock solid. Joe Gibbs Racing is facing a ton of questions right now. Kyle Busch and M&Ms just left. Denny Hamlin in a contract year with FedEx also in a contract year. Maybe some uncertainty there. They've got Martin Truex Jr. weighing retirement. He said he may not have a decision until September. Don't even get me started on Stuart Haas racing. Kevin Harvick is about to retire. Eric Almarola, if it's not this year, probably next year. And who knows if Smithfield leaves with him. They just put Ryan Priest in the 41. This will be his first full year in a decent Cup Series car. Penske, I guess they're the only other super team that's in a pretty good spot. Joey Logano, still young, gonna race for 10 or 15 more years, just won his second championship. He and Shell Pennzoil are locked up for the long term. I think Austin Sendrick is a solid young driver who's gonna continue to improve. Ryan Blaney though, great, really, really good, but he doesn't win enough for my liking. He was winless last year, minus the All-Star Race, I'll give him credit for that. He's only had one multi-win season in his career and Ryan Blaney's been in basically a Penske car since like, what, 2016? This is gonna be his eighth full-time season in the Cup Series and he's only had one multi-win season. Like, he's been good, but he hasn't quite 
popped or realized his full potential that I think we all believe he's capable of. So Penske's in a decent spot, but Gibbs, SHR kind of reeling right now, facing a ton of uncertainty. Hendrick Motorsports, by comparison, is rock solid. This is what they do. This is why they're the best organization in NASCAR. It's why they've been the most successful organization in NASCAR pretty much my entire lifetime. You know, I was born one year after Terry Labonte's 1996 championship, but you know, Jeff Gordon won four titles. Jimmy Johnson won seven. Chase Elliott and Kyle Larson have trophies now. The team even has a strong succession plan in place. You know, Rick Hendrick, 73 years old. He's getting up there, but compared to Joe Gibbs, Roger Penske, Richard Childress, Rick Hendrick's actually fairly young. And now they've got Jeff Gordon involved in a clear leadership role. I, I just don't see what's going to stop this team from steamrolling over the competition for another decade or two, at least. I know Rick Hendrick's a big businessman and the Ally deal has a lot to do with his car dealerships. He's able to leverage some B2B stuff behind the scenes away from the racetrack in ways that you know some other team owners just can't. But my goodness, he is taking full advantage of every resource, every connection, every relationship he's he has, he's made. And Hendrick Motorsports just <laughs> will not go away. Remember like 2018, 2019, Jimmy Johnson was suddenly unable to find victory lane. It took Chase Elliott almost three years to win his first race. Dale Jr. was retiring. They got rid of Casey Kane. There were very real questions about Hendrick Motorsports' future. They obviously had the personnel and the resources to rebuild, to reload, but... For a couple of years there, they looked a little shaky. And Toyota, for example, took advantage. Truex in 2017, Kyle Busch in 2019. Logano won that title in 2018, but once Chase Elliott got his feet underneath them, once Kyle Larson signed with the team, 2020 champions, 2021 champions, and now they've got four of the best young drivers locked up long-term with sponsorship. <laughs> They're a juggernaut. There's just no other way to say it. But uh, Bowman fans, I'm happy for you. Your guy is gonna be in a competitive seat for at least four full seasons. That's exciting stuff. Let me know down in the comments below. Do you think this is a good decision for Hendrick? Do you think Alex Bowman's worthy of the 48? There are some Bowman haters out there. I've been accused of being an Alex Bowman hater. And I think that's just because I pointed out how bad he was over the summer last year, which he was, but <laughs> obviously came on strong in the playoffs. I'm not a Bowman hater, but I know there are some skeptics out there. So what do you think? Do you think Alex Bowman is worthy of this 48 seat? Do you think he'll continue to improve? Do you think he's reached his ceiling? How about Daniel Suarez and Trackhouse? Share your thoughts down in the comment section below. I gotta head to the racetrack to cover qualifying, but if you enjoyed this video, leave it a like. If you're new, be sure to hit that subscribe button. And thank you to my Patreon supporters. It's thanks to you guys I'm able to go to races like this, a number each year, and cover the action in person, share it with you all at home, meet so many fans when I'm on the road, that wouldn't be possible without your support. I greatly appreciate all of you. Again, tonight after qualifying, the plan is to go live on this channel. Fingers crossed internet at the track and in the media center is working in my favor, but uh, hopefully I'll see you there. Thank you so much for watching. I'll catch you in the next episode.